I'll show you how I've been using this Atomstack P9M40 to add a little something extra to my recent woodworking projects and do a complete review of the laser along the way. The first project I'm going to use this laser on is to engrave a quote on the inside lid of a cedar chest that I recently made for my daughter. My first step is to run some tests on some scrap wood to make sure I get the settings correct. This laser is a fixed focus design, so setting the focus on this laser couldn't be any more simple. Just place the spacer under the laser and tighten the screw. Much easier than some other lasers where you have to turn a focus nut while staring at a laser spot. And I'm just going to connect the USB cable to my computer where I'm going to use the Lightburn software to run some simple tests. Using the material test feature in Lightburn, I'm able to configure a simple test grid for a matrix of different speed and power settings. And just push the start button and gosh darn it, stop! I have the workpiece in the wrong place. Okay, rookie mistake, so I reposition the workpiece and restart the test. A pretty good result for a first test. And after running a few more tests, I settle in the laser settings of 900 millimeters per minute, 70% power, and 0.1 interval. By the way, I want to mention that this laser has an onboard air assist, which really improves the quality of the burn by keeping the smoke and the heat cleared away. You can feel the air coming out from under the shroud, not sure how to show it on video. It is in a very strong airflow, and you can buy an optional air assist module for this laser if you want even more, but it seems to be doing a pretty good job with the basic onboard air assist. Before heading over to the cedar chest, I want to feel confident that I can get the laser aligned square and also know that I'll be able to properly measure and get the engraving centered in the lid of the cedar chest. So one more test on scrap wood, this time with the entire inscription and with the final laser settings. This came out so nice. So let's go engrave the cedar chest. It's going to be less convenient for me to have my computer connected, so I'll make use of the offline engraving capability of this laser by saving the G-code from Lightburn onto the TF card and then placing the TF card in the laser. The small footprint of this laser is really nice since the inside of the cedar chest lid is recessed. It might be kind of a hassle with a larger non-portable laser to make this work. The touchscreen control is great. I really like the design so that you can lift and hold the touchpad in your hands and you can hold it at any height or angle that feels comfortable. And the controls are pretty intuitive and easy to use. First I just select the file from the TF card and then I use the frame feature just as a double check to make sure the laser is positioned correctly. Don't want to make the same mistake here that I made on the practice piece. And then I push the start button and let it do its thing. And the touchpad's held onto the frame with magnets when you're not using it. The results are awesome and I'm stoked. For my next project, I want to cut some wood all the way through, so I bought this honeycomb base. I actually bought two of them in order to compare this low budget one that I found for about $30 compared to the one made by Adam Stack that I bought for about $50. The scale on the $30 one is badly misprinted and therefore kind of useless and even though the picture on the one I ordered showed millimeters, this one showed up with an inches scale on it which I really don't want. Also it feels like it's kind of a plastic honeycomb. It says it's aluminum but it just feels like cheap plastic. The Atom Stack Honeycomb base is significantly nicer quality, better material, it's more sturdy, and it comes with some hold down clamps. Well worth the extra $20, so I'm sending the cheap one back and keeping this one. Since I'm not going to have a permanent location for this laser, I need to take it down and set it up predictably so that the corner of the honeycomb base is always at the laser home position. So to help me do that, I'm going to cut a spacer bracket out of some 3mm black acrylic. After doing some tests to get the right settings, then I use the laser to cut the spacer bracket. So now each time I set up the laser, this bracket helps to make sure that I get the corner of the honeycomb exactly at the laser home position. And just to check that I got the bracket the right size, I'm going to engrave a square that is spaced 10 millimeters from the corner. Nice, 10 millimeters, just as expected. 
So I just noticed the laser isn't completely level. It looks like it sits a few millimeters higher when it's extended out than when it's close to the main frame. That can't be good. It's probably an assembly mistake on my part, so I loosen these screws, just make sure everything is aligned and level, and then retighten the screws. Yeah, that seems to have fixed it. Hmm, something to pay attention to when you're assembling this, I guess. For my next project, I'm going to cut through some 3.5mm solid white oak for the lid of a gift box I've been working on. After running a few tests, I decide on the settings of 80 millimeters per minute, 100% power, and three passes. Having confidence in the location of the corner of the honeycomb base, and I'm able to just set the workpiece against the corner, and then make use of the grid and light burn to align the cut exactly where I want it on the workpiece. And then just kick off the laser and let it do its thing. While that's engraving, I want to mention that Adam Stack Official did send me this laser and ask for my review. However, I have no obligation to say or not say anything good or bad, and my review and assessment of the laser is completely my own unfiltered and unbiased perspective. This cut looks nice and clean. It's a bit difficult to get out because the laser is such a thin cut and the piece is still kind of wedged in there. I don't want to take a chance of breaking the workpiece. Finally, it all came loose. This is going to be glued onto the gift box with a red paduk wood top, so it looks like a flame. This box will hold a cocktail smoker kit, but that's a whole separate video. So just a couple of notes on cutting solid hardwood with this laser. What I was just cutting was 3.3 millimeter white oak, and I also tried some thicker oak, 4.5 millimeters, with four passes and a really slow laser speed I was able to cut through it, but it wouldn't likely cut any thicker oak than this. And I tried some test pieces on 3.5 millimeter thick cherry, and it cut through with two passes, so quite a bit easier to cut than the white oak. So while the advertising for this laser may say it cuts 15 millimeter wood, maybe for some lighter density woods, but for these very dense hardwoods, I would say 3 to 4 millimeters is the limit of its cutting capabilities. Which is still pretty good for only a 5 watt laser. Many 5 watt lasers claim only to be able to cut light density wood and not dense hardwood of any thickness. Next, I'm going to try etching on some clear acrylic to make one of those cool LED night lights. First step is to paint one side of the acrylic. I'm using this spray-on water-based black paint. It's a lot easier to get a uniform application than brush-on tempura paint. I put on a couple of coats and then let it dry. I'm placing the acrylic with the paint side down, and the focus of the laser needs to be set to the bottom surface of the acrylic, which is a bit of an issue since the focus spacer block is about the same thickness as the acrylic is. But it should be okay to just set the laser height slightly above the top of the acrylic since this laser has a long 50 millimeter focal length because of its spot compression technology and multi-lens convergence features. So I've imported the image into Lightburn and configured it to be engraved using the dithering feature in Lightburn. and I just push the start button to kick off the laser. The shroud around this laser does a pretty good job of protecting your eyes and you shouldn't really need to wear safety glasses. When engraving this clear acrylic though, you can see the blue light kind of flashing everywhere. I thought it'd be a good idea to put on safety glasses. In fact, I wear safety glasses anytime I'm using this laser. You can get either of these amber ones or the green colored ones. They both work with this laser, 450 nanometers. The amber ones have a little bit higher optical density, so I think they're probably a little bit better, just a little more difficult to see through. This looks like it came out really nice. I just need to remove the black paint with some solvent. I'm using lacquer thinner, but alcohol would probably also work fine. And the result is a really nice looking LED nightlight. You can get these little nightlight kits for about seven or eight dollars each online and they make really nice gifts. And I was curious what the same image would look like if it was engraved on some birch plywood. Wow, that looks great. Much nicer than on the acrylic in my opinion. After using the laser quite a bit, I noticed what seemed to be a 10 to 20% loss in power, which ended up just being that the laser head getting a bit dirty. I just removed the windshield and the laser protective cover and cleaned it with alcohol and the non-woven cloth that came with the laser. 
The paper user manual mentions the need to do this occasionally. However, the online version of the user manual has added an extra page with a procedure on how to do it. And once it was clean, then it's back to performing like brand new. So just a few summary thoughts. Overall, I'm really impressed. I'm not sure about the claim it'll cut 15 millimeter thick wood or not, but there is a lot of technology in the laser head that gets the most out of only five watts. And the quality of the engraving and the cuts is really awesome. And for me, the portability works really good because I don't have a dedicated space in my small wood shop to leave it set up all the time. Thanks so much for watching.